Today we're talking about the 92 Elite LTT ORD. Are you ready? Stand by. What's going on guys? Welcome to the range. I have the 92 Elite Langdon Tactical Technologies with RDO slide right here for a first shots video. But wouldn't you know it, it's threatening to rain. We've got this lovely cloud cover that's making everything look pink outside at about 6.30 here in Dallas, Texas. So we're going to see if we can't get some shooting in before the rain really starts. Uh, I don't mind shooting in the rain, however, Video cameras don't like to get rained on, so let's see what we can do here. Just gonna talk over some of the features on the gun real quick. So starting at the bottom with the frame, you've got the LTT VZ style grips out of G10, very, very nice. The front checkering on the gun just in dry fire doesn't seem to bite too hard, but it's better than what's normally on the 92s. The rear checkering, however, on the gun does plant in your palm quite nicely. When you get a firm grip, it bites in, it feels good. It is uh, the Magazine release access to it is real good. You don't even have to break your grip to spit out mags, which is awesome You got a rail up front the frame is aluminum So it kind of makes this interesting sort of like tritone finish where you've got matte black frame shiny steel uh, Slide and then stainless steel barrel. So it looks real good I love the look of monochrome as you can tell by my logo So if you're a classy character, you need yourself a monochrome gun the grip screws sort of add to that Aesthetic and they've got an mp3 version on the site as well, which uh, further enhances the monochrome look so looking good Coming up to the slide you got fore and aft cocking serrations that are not awesome But you can with a Beretta. Hey CZ guys, you, you can't do this easily. Look at that That's how you charge a Beretta when you're doing an unloaded start uh, You don't have to go over the top so you can just go like that and chamber around which is awesome um, The actual star of the show is the modifications to get the uh, electronic sight down onto the frame. So you got rear sights that are target sights, uh, suppressor height front sight. The decocker and the extractor have all been changed to accommodate the uh, electronic sight mounting base. So you got that going. Got the Elite Hammer there. And if you're familiar with Berettas, this is a uh, M9A1 frame that's been sort of contoured under the trigger guard at the factory. Uh, and a vertex slide, which is the thin slide. So this would previously be like a Franken gun. Uh, you wouldn't be able to buy one of these off the shelves, but uh, Langdon Tactical was able to get this configuration from the factory. Well, let's fire it up and see how she does. The pistol ships with three Mechgar 18 round magazines, which is good because the 15 rounds that come from Beretta aren't awesome. The 18 round ones are the ones that if you're a USPSA competitor, that's the one that the uh, base pads for carry optics division need to go on so you get three good magazines right out of the box which is exciting oh no rain go away so we'll see if we can't get a couple few magazines in before this sucker rains us out just so you guys can see what's going on here at the range i figured something out so we could still get some footage in my camera now has an umbrella that is an umbrella i had in my car fastened with a USPSA inner belt to my tripod. We're making it happen here today, boys. Yes, this is a terrible looking hat, but it's waterproof. And what kind of hipster would I be with an obscure double action, single action gun if I didn't have some sort of fashion statement to make? Or this just cries for attention and I need you to pay attention to me and validate me. Look at it, you CZ guys. All right, but to you CZ guys, check out how cool this is. You can't do this with the CZ. Oh yeah, under the dust cover. Let's get this thing zeroed. That's too much dot. Let's turn that down so we can see what we're aiming at. There we are. All right. This thing shoots incredibly soft. 
That's wonderful. Here we go. One, two, I'm gonna do three clicks up and let's go four clicks back to the left. All right, one thing that is awesome about these 407 COs and all of the Hollow Sun lineup is the super positive clicks on the adjustment. It's better than Trigicon, hate to say it, but yeah, this is a 407 CO with the 8 MOA ring. If I love it, then maybe it'll get an SRO to wear, but for now, the uh, 8 MOA circle's a really awesome reticle. Let's check it out. All right, let me go look at that one. Zero seems uh, about on. I'm gonna run it back to like 20 yards on the plate rack and make sure we can connect on plates and call that good for today. All right, back at 25 yards. Let's see if we can put some on steel here. Not low, that was me. Oh, that was high, that was me. All right, zero is good enough. Let's start shooting the thing. Let's do some getting to know you with the double action just because one of the great things about a double action gun is it does force you to learn how to lock out your right wrist if you're gonna have any success with them. So you guys, you change out all of your double action guns to single action only. You could be stunting yourself as far as developing as a shooter. You should always, always train with the double action until you have it mastered, until there is no thought that you can make your hits. But enough lecturing, let's shoot. All right, double action pull number one. All right, that was a little bit left. No, it actually ended up right in the center. I'm starting to catch my finger on the slide serrations, not used to uh, the Beretta slide, so I'm probably gonna nick my thumb, but I'll get used to it. It'll be all right. Okay. I'm pulling them a little bit right. So that's me, I gotta learn how to stabilize this sucker. That was a good one. Let's get a look at that. About 10 yards. So there it is, it's like a palm sized group. Uh, double action only at about 10 yards. I wasn't taking great amount of care just trying to get it in the A zone and they all are A's that touches the perf for you scoring Nazis. Um, the trigger, the double action trigger is actually remarkably smooth, so let's look at it. Uh, it's just super, super linear. There's like no stacking, no hitching or anything. It's just straight to the rear pull. It's about a six and four ounce gun. I measured it last night on my scale. It's a six and four ounce double action pull. Single action right there, so there's a little bit of slack till you get to the wall, and it feels like a super hard, crisp wall. So if you like prepping triggers, it's a great gun for that. But the pull through, very short, almost no over travel. And the reset is, let's get that magazine out of there. The reset is very short. Not super positive, but incredibly, incredibly short. Good grief, man. Incredibly short, it's a fantastic trigger. Um, so it's a three pound, four ounce single action. I wouldn't be surprised if this gun settles in at about six pounds on the double and three pounds or less on the single once all of the springs take a set and the parts kind of made up a little bit better through fire fitting. But that's the trigger right there, guys. Out of the box, the trigger is awesome. But for what you spend on a pistol like this, you'd kind of want it to be that way, right? I mean, this sucker's $14.95 on the Langdon Tactical website. This is not a inexpensive pistol, so it's awesome that it comes set up right from the factory. And what would a new pistol be without some mag dumping? So let's get to that business right there. I'll take it. Before we go any further, we need to talk about the sacred relationship between content creator and subscriber. I make world-class firearms content, which you enjoy. I bring fancy pencils to the range and you come with me. And you take a summer off of your career. Learn to do chainsaw sculptures. 
begin to make chainsaw sculptures of my logo and sell them along some highway in the middle of nowhere. So the people who come that highway will know the great work we're doing here on this channel. I uh, appreciate you guys liking. It does help in the algorithm. There are some links in the description. You can check those out. But please subscribe to the channel. There's about 80% chance you're not subscribed to the channel. It doesn't cost you anything, guys. And I'm not going to call you and pester you about your w car's warranty. Do some seven yard devils here. I haven't figured out I haven't figured out how to stabilize it and recoil yet. Um, second shot's pulling low, and I can see it in the recoil impulse. It's going to be a minute before I figure out how to grip the thing and make the muzzle not dip when the slide closes. But this is what it looks like. So all the first shots are about right there, and the follow-on shots are kind of down there. And that's totally me not knowing how to stabilize it. It's going to be a minute before I understand how to normalize the grip pressure and make the thing track like I need it to. If you actually pull the trigger the way it wants to be pulled and not jerk the crap out of it, it'll hit everything. It's pretty great. Now, I'm not a Beretta shooter, as you may or may not know. This is the third set of mags we're filling up here. But uh, it's interesting. The trigger does need to be pulled, like, despite it being really, really good, like, the muzzle of the gun's pretty light. And uh, if you jerk the trigger, believe it or not, it shoots low, just like basically every semi-auto ever. But uh, I can't seem to be able to get away a little bit more on bad trigger with how I'm adapted to my Glock grips. So I'm enjoying learning how to stabilize a new gun in recoil, so that's fun. Uh, my thumb is getting agitated a little bit by the decocker and the cutout in the slide for it. I just need to learn how to hold my thumb on it, but again, a Beretta 92 shooter, so I'm sure uh, that'll come in time. But uh, enjoying the gun, the gun shoots super soft. One thing about this gun is it feels like the action is on absolute ball bearings, almost like a custom 1911 with how the slide cycles back and forth. And the reason for that is we've got not one, not two, but three rail sections that the slide rides on. So it makes a lot of contact area with the slide and it sounds good uh out of the box this sucker is getting a full length stainless guide rod with an uncaptured spring which i think is awesome as a competition shooter because it gives you control over the spring weight and it's pretty easy to change easy to maintain but um just how the gun is holding up so far uh finish looks great i see that the finish on the barrel is actually starting to um uh, you can see a little bit of wear on the barrel let's see Focus on what I want you to focus on. There it is. Uh, yes, that actually does work for people who use mirrorless cameras. Blocking out the background makes it focus on the foreground. But there it is, a little bit of wear. I've only got, uh, I don't know, 100, let's see. Whatever six times 18 is rounds through it. But so far, so good. Seem to be learning this uh, double action. But, oh, it never gets old, cocking from underneath. Got the Mantis X on there. Let's see how this bad boy does in recoil. We'll just do six shots and see how the muzzle climb is on this thing. I'll do my best to see if the gun does its best. All right, straight up and down. So for the most part, the recoil graphs are all over the place because I don't know how to stabilize the pistol yet. Still going a bit up and right. Gonna have to work on that, but... Um, <clears throat> First shot, 359 degrees muzzle climb, 579, 589, 418, 
479, 492. So it seems like it's sub five degrees of muzzle climb, which is more than a Glock, which for me and my grip is like high threes uh, to low fours. And if I really bear down, I can get it below three degrees. But this is a hammer fired gun, so you'd expect it to have more. Generally, the graphs on the muzzle climb, you can see that that's mostly straight up and down. Oops. Uh, it's almost straight up and down. But you can see a lot of oscillation. I don't have control over the slide dipping. You can see kind of two peaks there as the muzzle rises and climbs again. But uh, you can see that it ultimately finishes just a little bit low and left of where it started, which is good. Uh, that one was a little bit high and right from where it started. So it's returning to the point of aim pretty good. We'll do another set of six and see how it goes. See if I can't do better this time. New high score. All right, let's see how that one looks. All right, this is more what I was hoping to see. Got a 393, a 368, 388, 533, and that's largely because it it dipped. I let it dip too much in re when it was close. 357 and 398. So I am able to hold this roughly the same as a Glock as far as muzzle climb is concerned, and the graphs. I think I'll be able to stabilize these and get them to be straight up and down with time. <laughs> the 92 Elite Langdon Tactical Technologies with ORD slide is the number one pistol in the United States for people who like hearing the sound of their voice and want really long names. Even if I abbreviated, it is the 92 Elite LTT with ORD slide. It's a really long name. I've got the dot turned off. We're just gonna use the black target irons here and see where it's impacting on the target. I'm about 10 yards on this target. Oh yeah. So, I'm not a good iron shooter. If you follow the channel, you know that. So that was a bad trigger pull. I saw it on the sights as it happened. Those were all good, I felt good about those, and I held the gun on the wrong part of the target when I pulled that one, so. Yeah, the irons are perfect as far as elevation is concerned for 124 grain bullets. For the Garam, let's see if we can make it happen, Mr. LTT. That was a little bit right. Got it. Got it. Three in a row with an 8 MOA optic at 100 yards. Yeah! So there it is, the Beretta 92 Elite LTT with ORD slide. Um, not a Beretta shooter, but I really liked how the gun performed today. I'm gonna spend some more time with it so I don't look like quite such a noob during the actual review. But it is a pretty cool pistol and I think it does deliver on value for money as far as this sucker is concerned. Uh, this is clearly an heirloom type of piece, so I look forward to shooting it more. I appreciate you guys watching and I'll catch you on the next one.